This is Valley News Live at 4. I started hearing this, the most eerie, gut-wrenching, uh, devilish sound of impending death. It's been 20 years since the terrorist attacks of September 11th. Events to remember the nearly 3,000 lives lost began today in Washington, D.C. and New York City. Michael George reports now from Ground Zero. On the eve of the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, people are coming to where the Twin Towers once stood, including firefighter Nate Smith from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He brought his family to pay their respects. Just to kind of pay tribute to fallen brothers and sisters. Um, it's pretty emotional. At the New York Stock Exchange, traders held a moment of silence to mark the day. On 9-11, St. Nicholas Church was destroyed when the towers came down. It's taken 20 years to rebuild, but today, finally, the cross was placed back on top. Near the nation's capital, bells rang three times, one for each location planes hit on September 11th. FBI Director Christopher Wray says the agency lives every day as if it's September 10th. Every day we wake up asking ourselves, what do we need to do to keep people safe today and tomorrow and the day after? Tomorrow, ceremonies will mark the anniversary at the Pentagon in Shanksville, Pennsylvania and New York City. The Director of Homeland Security met with New York officials today, guaranteeing the safety of residents and visitors. We have a very resilient and strong counterterrorism overlay that is thousands of uniformed and civilian members overlaid with bomb detection, over, overlaid with long guns, as the governor said, and that should reassure people, not alarm people. The Department of Homeland Security says there are no credible threats from any terrorist groups or individuals. Michael George, CBS News, New York. President Biden will pay his respects tomorrow in New York, D.C. and Pennsylvania. The Grand Forks Fire Department and Air Force Base are hosting a joint open house to commemorate September 11th. Tomorrow they'll have demonstrations and tours of their equipment and you'll have a chance to meet with military firefighters and the mayor. They want people to understand the importance of 9-11, especially as we look back 20 years ago. I think it's, it's very important for the community to come together on especially a, a day like to, or, uh, tomorrow. Um, for us to, to show the community what we do day in and day out, not just putting out fires, but responding to other calls as well. The program starts at 9-11 tomorrow morning with a moment of silence for the lives lost in 2001. The next two hours will be a series of demonstrations, including a high-angle rescue hazmat and extrication. Here are some of the other 9-11 events happening in the Valley tomorrow. The Fargo Public Library is hosting a 9-11 poster exhibit featuring personal stories of people who witnessed and survived the attacks. Bonanzaville in West Fargo is marking the day with a Veterans Patriot Day 5K and 10K. Registration there starts at 7 a.m. The race starts at 8.30. Fargo AMVETS are holding a program to recognize the fallen. That starts at 9.25 a.m., which is about the time one of the hijackers contacted air traffic controllers for the first time that day. That'll be at 1001 First Avenue South. Fergus Falls Police are hosting a walk of remembrance to honor the fallen heroes and brave Americans who endured this day 20 years ago. The walk will begin at 8.46 a.m., which is the time the first World Trade Tower was hit. Davies High School was chosen to represent North Dakota for a September 11th educational program through the Freedom Flag Foundation. The group is establishing partnerships in all 50 states to educate the next generation about 9-11. Davies raised their Freedom Flag today. It'll be flown annually on Patriot Day and through the month of September. They were also loaned a piece of steel recovered from Ground Zero to be used in educational programs this year. And if you're up for a road trip this weekend, you might want to check out the 9-11 ceremony at the International Peace Gardens on the U.S.-Canadian border near Botano, North Dakota. The Peace Gardens has a sculpture made from pieces of the World Trade Center demolition. If you go tomorrow, organizers ask that you be in your seat by 9.45 prior to the ceremony at 10 a.m. It's looking like most of these events will get through the day without much trouble in the weather department. Here's Hutch with a first look. Hutch. Stacy, thanks so much. Hello. As we close out the work week on a summer like note, warm temperatures across the valley as we head into the evening, but changes are on the way. Here's a look at this. We have near 90 degree reading in the central portion of the Dakotas, 80s here in the valley and a few 70s, upper 70s at that in Lakes Country. Right now it's cooling off in central Canada as a cold front's making its way through. So change is coming for the weekend. You can even see 
line of clouds and some showers up in parts of southern Manitoba as a result of this. Your planning forecast for this evening in the FM area looks absolutely delightful. Temperatures stay in the 80s through sunset, then 70s for most of the evening with light winds. Can't ask for much better. It's overnight when that cool front will pass through and you'll know it because we'll have some gusty winds to contend with and it doesn't look like it'll be overly rainy, but we do have a chance of rain for your Patriot Day forecast. I'll have hour by hour details on that coming up here, Stacy, in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. As we approach the 20th anniversary of September 11th, many teachers are looking for ways to convey the impact of that day to a new generation. Friends of Flight 93 is working to provide those tools to educators across the country and, as Skylar Henry reports, welcoming classes to the National Memorial that tells the story of the 40 passengers and crew who died there. In this spot in rural Pennsylvania, History is alive for teachers Tina Johnston and Katie Speary. I remember what that day was like. We got out of school early. The Flight 93 National Memorial helped Speary tell the 9-11 story to students who weren't alive to remember that day. I think we all have that job to share our experience. Very Johnston now retired and volunteers to teach the difficult subject. They didn't know when they got on that plane. The hand that fate dealt them and how they faced it. She brought her classes to this site where Flight 93 crashed after the passengers and crew attempted to regain control from the hijackers, weaving Shakespeare into the lesson. We looked at the story of Hamlet. We looked at Hamlet's last words, tell my story, and this is a story that needs to be told. The nonprofit Friends of Flight 93 helps educators tell the 9-11 story. We work with teachers out of Florida and out of Ohio. Danielle Miller coordinates with teachers across the country, both in person and virtually, offering students workshops and tours. What do you think it means to be able to teach that generation who wasn't alive for 9-11? It means keeping a promise that the nation made 20 years ago. Those of us with living memories of the event are never going to forget what September 11, 2001 was like. You can't teach history without empathy. Ohio middle school teacher Scott Marsh is using these tools in his classroom. We're trying to introduce um, my kids to a world that's not the same now as it was back then. Now they participate in a University of Pittsburgh study exploring how the Flight 93 Memorial and other sites resonate with children. Kids do see the sites different than adults do, and just to rely on what an adult thinks a kid will think isn't always a good idea because the kids have different viewpoints on things. A new generation making its own connection to a pivotal day in our nation's history. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Shanksville, Pennsylvania. The friends of Flight 93 say they're busy as ever this fall with already 27 field trips and 14 virtual classroom visits. President Biden signaled he's prepared for a fight after proposing sweeping new vaccine mandates that are likely to affect more than 100 million U.S. workers. The administration is drafting a new rule requiring companies with more than 100 employees to mandate the COVID vaccine or weekly testing. Companies that violate it could face fines of more than $13,000. Some Republicans have called the new actions un American and are threatening to sue. Uh, when you have a president like Biden issuing unconstitutional edicts against the American people, uh, we have a responsibility to stand up for the Constitution and to fight back, and we are doing that in the state of Florida. The president's new plan also includes a vaccine mandate for federal executive branch workers and contractors, as well as for Head Start and federal school employees. He's calling on large entertainment venues to require proof of vaccination, and he wants states to mandate the vaccine for school employees. Tonight on Valley News Live at 6, what the Fargo-Moorhead West Fargo Chamber has to say about the president's mandate announcement and the potential impact on businesses here in the Valley. Nearly half of North Dakota's population is vaccinated against COVID-19, so many people are waiting for the next step, a booster shot. While experts say boosters will likely be necessary at some point, the World Health Organization is now urging them to hold off, asking that countries with large supplies of vaccine delay giving boosters to shift supplies to poorer countries struggling to vaccinate their populations. North Dakotans are waiting to see when a booster will be available for them. Some say the wait will be manageable as long as they still get the shot. I suppose if they really needed it. But I really would like to get my booster too. The FDA authorized booster shots on August 12th for immunocompromised individuals.
After the first 10 days in class, Minnesota State University Moorhead is reporting an overall decrease in enrollment. The college is down almost 500 students compared to the fall of 2020. They have roughly 150 international students, which is also down from last year. They say they're happy to see an increase in diversity on campus at 14.34%, which is a five-year high for the college. The Greater Moorhead Days Parade is back. Floats and fleets from area businesses will cruise down Center Avenue tonight. That starts at 6 o'clock and will go west on Center Avenue starting at 11th Street. Parking is available at the Moorhead Center Mall and Wells Fargo parking lots. Center Avenue from 11th to 14th Street will be closed starting in a little less than 30 minutes. The remainder of the route will close around 545 tonight. Roads should be back open by 7. The Salvation Army of Fargo kicked off its annual Coats for Kids drive today. They're collecting new and gently used winter clothes for hundreds of families in need. The items they say they're looking for the most are children's coats and snow pants in sizes 6 through 16, as well as youth size boots and gloves. So it goes from today to September 20th. We are collecting coats for kids and families, so adults as well. Our primary target, of course, are coats for kids. Yep. If you want to get involved, you can drop off your donations at any Hornbacher's location until September 20th. Still ahead of four, the long-lasting health impacts first responders are experiencing two decades after their heroic actions at Ground Zero. Very quiet weather now. In fact, very warm weather today. Temperatures reach near 90 degrees in Jamestown, 88 in Carrington, and a lot of 80s across western Minnesota as well. Your Patriot Day forecast does include change. Some late-day showers. Hour by our details are straight ahead.